Hi everyone, I'm Connie Roberts. And I'm Jim Skakosa. We're here at this beautiful mountain retreat. There's nature surrounding us here. It looks beautiful. We're just getting underway now. We're going to show you coming up next. This is a really woodsy area back here. What are you planning on doing? <laughs> well, this is a very large family, large extended family. This is a second home for them here in the Pocono Mountains. And the whole object was they wanted to be in the woods. So uh, the home was built several years ago. It's a beautiful log home. They have a finished basement down below where all the family gets together and they have a big game room and stuff. Nice. One of the things that they wanted to do was to extend that outdoor living outside in the, in the property. And of course, being as rough as it was, we have a little bit of a challenge. So they wanted to create a fire pit, some small entertaining areas. So this is phase one of a multi-phase project. But initially what we're going to be doing is putting in this walkway down to a fire pit with a patio so they can come out in the evenings and spend some time outside while they're here on the property. Okay. So if you look at the plan here, you can see what we have coming out here is we have, this is the finished basement down below here. Okay. And then we're going to come out low on these steps here to a, a new pad. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a paved pad. And we're going to work in some boulders. Again, the whole idea was to try to cre keep the place as rustic and as natural looking as possible. We have a lot of native material that's growing on the site, which we're going to try to maintain as best we can mm -hmm. and still be able to work around it. So we have this entry pad coming down outside of the patio, or the basement rather. And then this will kind of, there'll be a stepping stone path coming down this way. And down where you see the machine and the bucket down there is where the patio and the fire pit's going to wind up. But we've got a lot of work to do in the meantime. We're using some native flagstone steps to get down into that area. Uh, we're doing a small little retaining wall. One of the things we want to try to accomplish here is that once we're done with this, it's kind of hidden down there in the woods. So you don't really see it until you get closer to it and go down that path. Oh, nice. So that's our goal here. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait to get started. Work begins on this backyard project. Stone block and pavers are brought in as the land is shaped and level. The crew moves quickly over the next few days. Son, is we've made an outline of the inner part of the fire pit. This is where the fire pit's going. And that's the ring that sits inside after we build the wall up. So basically we take these fire pit block. If you want to grab a few of those. Okay. And we just create a circle with it. And since we have this outline here from the actual metal ring, we know exactly where they need to go. We've already graded and leveled off this area, so it's easy enough just to stack the block in here. I like the colors you chose for this project. Yeah, it really fits in nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. All right, so is this one gonna have to be cut? We need to swing that a little bit, Trump. Because it wants to fit in there exactly. I okay. wanna grab one more, see okay. if we can get it fitted. Just tighten that up a little bit. And then you just keep going. So there you go. We've got our bottom course for the fire pit, and then we just go up from there. Okay. Coming up next, the main steps are brought in for the pathway. Free online banking is now available to all First Northern Bank and Trust Company customers. There's online banking, mobile banking online financial management, online bill pay, and online cash management. With online banking, you have 24-7 access to your accounts, 365 days a year from anywhere with internet access. Mobile banking allows you to bank using a smartphone by using the First Northern Bank mobile banking app. Our free money management tool helps you make more informed financial decisions. You can pay bills electronically with our convenient online bill pay option. 
and our commercial customers can use our online cash management for managing payroll, wire transfers, and working with account balances. For more information or to sign up, contact any of our branch offices. Looking for plants you can trust to create a beautiful, easy to maintain garden? All you have to do is look for the Proven Winner's name to know you're getting the most distinctive plants on the market. That's because Proven Winner's partners with the top plant breeders around the world to ensure varieties that are vigorous, healthy, vibrant, and unique. Chestnut Hill Nursery Garden Center employees are Proven Winner certified. Go to ProvenWinners.com to learn more about what makes Proven Winner's plants different from the rest. Proven Winner's plants at Chestnut Hill Nursery, Route 209 Broadheadsville. days on the job we see some progress here. Yeah it's coming along you can see we've set up our wall already that's our veranda wall which is going to be on the circumference of the patio paver that's going to be there we're setting our fire pit and then we'll work our grades into that accordingly. We're also going to be bringing in a lot of native rock and setting it in there which will be cut into the pavers as well so once again it's going to fit into the landscape. You can already see when you look through how it fits into the landscape so nicely. It does it looks really nice. Piece by piece, the fire pit puzzle is put together until finally it is finished and work can move to another area. So Jim, what's going on over here? Well, this is going to be our entry pad to the walkway going down to that fire pit area. So they come out the basement there, they're going to come down a couple steps, this will be a paved pad. And what we had to do was really secure this area because we've got a bit of slope coming down here. So we've used some of the boulders we brought in, again, to fit it in as a natural setting, and that'll secure all our base material so after we lay the pavers, they're gonna stay there. And then we'll have a nice paver pathway, or actually a stepping stone path that's gonna go down through here, through the um, flagstone steps that we have, and eventually down into that fire pit area. So it's really beginning to shape up now. Yeah, it really looks cool here. Well, Jim, we got a few days under our belts, and it looks like this is shaping up. <laughs> it is indeed. Okay, so you can see we've got our wall in. We've laid most of our pavers down here. We have our fire pit installed below. And you can also see how we're bringing the boulders into the scene. Again, it's a very natural, native mountain scene, so we're bringing a lot of the boulders that are on site and a lot of the stone that's on site, bringing it into the whole scene here so it looks like it's been here for a long time. But now we're really kind of getting ready to set one of our first steps. Remember, we have a set of stairways going up to the uh, patio, which is up by the entry into the basement. So we're gonna start to set our first step. Let's show you what we're gonna do. Okay. okay. Jim, what is this contraption you're using to pick <laughs> up this step? <laughs> we call it our back saver. <laughs> so what this does, this is a native piece of rock that was taken right out of a quarry and cut to a specific size, height, and width. And it's flagstone, but it's a whole piece of flagstone. And so this probably weighs in a neighborhood of four or 500 pounds. So to try to lift that manually would be virtually impossible. So we have this tool that we can clamp on. We can adjust the range on it, depending on the width of the block that we're lifting. And as they pull up on this, it's going to almost like a scissor close up on it and lifts it into place so we can set it exactly where we need it. And we're not trying to fudge it and move it around and move stone around and hurt ourselves in the process. So it works pretty well. But you can see what we've done here is we've set a line here. So basically the face of that stone is going to sit on that line oh. and that's going to be our first step that goes up the line here. Okay. Okay. So we'll try setting it. We'll try it. All right, Sean, let's do that. Just stand back a little bit in case okay. that thing lets go. <laughs> One more. Can you do that? Yeah. 
out, Sean. Okay. So it was easy as that. It looks great. Yeah, so it fits in here really nicely. We've got a total of seven of these going in here as it goes up the uh, slope. And then we'll tie in with some stepping stones in between, wind up at the patio and into the house. So off we go. The crew has several more steps to put in as work to complete the path from the house to the patio continues. Up next, a bee's nest delays the final plantings on this project. Joining me now is Kevin Barry of KMB Plumbing and Electrical, and we're here to talk about heating systems, Navian. Let's tell people about they can use it for their business or their home. Yes, Navian um, instantaneous hot water heaters can be used in residential or commercial applications. These units were installed in a 137 bed facility uh, nursing home. What makes this system different than others? This is a system where you're only paying for what you use on the water. In a normal residential home or business, they're using electric water heaters, which you're constantly paying for to keep that water warm. Now we're in a nursing facility here. What did you do here? We removed the 20,000 gallon electric water heater that would constantly reheat the water and their electric bills were through the roof. And we put in 11 Navians in their place. Now, there's a lot of Navians here. Mm -hmm. Why did you need so many? Um, because of their demand and our usage that they need for water and for cleaning and for a laundry. The units are designed where there's one master unit and the rest are slaves. So as they need more demand, they ramp up and start another unit and it continues on until their needs are dissatisfied. Now there's um, more to the Navian system. This is for on-demand heating the water. What about the other part of it? Navian does make a unit that'll do um, domestic hot water and do your heating system also. It's called a combi unit. And how does that work? It'll actually, if you have like hot water baseboard in your home, it'll take the place of your boiler in, in your basement and then you'll do the same thing. It will only heat and use as much gas as you need. So the energy efficiency is way up. So people who are thinking, oh, I have a, a large home, what would you suggest that they should do to keep their costs down? Obviously look into Navian water heaters because it's on demand use. It's not something that they're storing. And we can design a system for them and lay it out for as large or as small as they have. Now one of the unique things about the Navian system is it's neat and clean. I gotta, I gotta tell you, this looks beautiful in here um, for the amount of how many uh, units that are here. In, in people's homes, what does it do for them? It gets rid of their water tank. Correct, it gets rid of their electric hot water heater if they're constantly storing water and paying that bill over and over again for that same water. So that big tanks, they're out and you yep. have this small unit on your small wall. Small unit on the wall, it um, vents out um, relatively easily. This is an on-demand when you need it, you get it, no matter Correct. where it's at, Correct. in your commercial business or your home. Correct. So let's explain that. These have recirculation loops on them, so you have constant hot water to your faucets at all times. This facility needed it because it is a nursing facility. They're doing approximately 500 people a day. That's a lot. Yes. Kevin, if people want more information on this system, what should we tell them? You can contact us on the web at um, kmb underscore pe at yahoo.com or kmbplumbing.com, or you can call us direct at 570-460-0111. You deserve it. And escape from it all right in your own backyard. Create a peaceful and pleasing sanctuary. Build a lifetime of family memories right in your own backyard with the help of the landscape professionals at Chestnut Hill Nursery. Start planning your very own landscape escape today. Chestnut Hill Nursery, we can get you there to your very own landscape escape. Chestnut Hill Nursery, Route 209 Broadheadsville, chnursery.com. Jimmy, you know, there's a lot of rough weeds here and overgrowth of natural surroundings here. <laughs> That's kind of tough to manage. Well, this is the wild Poconos here, and it's <laughs> a, the site is certainly a bit rugged. That was part of the attraction for the homeowner. They wanted to be out here in the woods and feel like they were out in the mountains. And so they selected this site. They built this beautiful home. And although they have all this great entertaining within the home because they have a large extended family, 
One of the problems was that as rugged as it was out here, they really didn't utilize the space, couldn't utilize the space because they didn't feel comfortable walking out here, spending any time in the backyard. So when we first had our initial meeting, I suggested that there were certain things that we could do to maintain the natural beauty, to maintain the rugged look that they liked here, but at the same time, kind of tame it a little bit. So there were some usable space out here to continue the entertaining out into the yard. So that's what I think we've accomplished with the plan that we've set out to do here and the project that we've now completed. We're down to the final days of work on this project as the rest of the pavers are placed and the planting beds are done. Jim, I see this project is near completion and the plants are in and we got a hose wrapped around this tree. Well, we're wrapping things up here today and yes, this is a hose around the tree. <laughs> you know, the homeowner is not here on a full-time basis, so they were a little concerned about watering, the initial watering, especially until the plants get established. So what we've done is installed this soaker hose around all the plantings. And basically it's a hose that just weeps water out very slowly and will water those plants over a period of time. Well, how much time do you, do they need? Like, how much watering? Well, depending on the time of the season, you know, time of year, summertime, obviously, in the initial watering is going to be a little bit more critical. Uh, you go into a fall season, it's a little easier on the plants. And again, the, the plants actually grow their root systems in the fall, so it's a great time to plant. But typically on a new planting, we like to see those, those, water, those plantings get watered at least once a day for the first couple weeks. And then you can slowly back off on that. Again, if there's some rainfall, that's going to help you. What we've done in this case is we're actually installing some timers to him so that we can um, set it for certain days of the week, a particular duration, so he doesn't have to be concerned about making sure the plants are watered. Jim, I see the guys found a nice big size bee's nest here uh, in the that's roughage. That's a big old <laughs> hornet's nest, but you know, that's part of nature. It's the beauty of nature. And one of the things we tried to do was to try to keep that intact here. One of the other things that we've done, as you can see, we've got a lot of rock around here. This was all part of the scene here when we came originally. So with the exception of some of the larger boulders that we placed in the stairway and along the walls and stuff, all the material that you see here came from on site. What we had to do was gather it up and kind of place it around as we built out the project. But what it does is it allows us to try to maintain what that rugged look was, but at the same time tame it enough so they can come down here bring a couple of chairs, sit around the fire pit, and enjoy some good quality family time here in this beautiful setting. It's kind of like Boulder Field. Yeah. Well, you know, that's not uncommon up here in the Poconos. There's many areas where you see that Boulder Field, and it's kind of that similar look. So I think we've done a really good job of trying to bring that whole scene together. Well, Jim, this project is complete. It turned out great, didn't it? It did. When we come back, we'll give you a final tour. Krista's with me, we're here at Chestnut Hill Nursery, and we're gonna talk about vegetable gardens, starting them from seeds, because I need to know a little bit more information, because I wanna try it this year. So, in general, when do you start? Well, if you're interested in starting um, a vegetable garden, the best time to put in seeds for cold weather crop is gonna be around January. Things like broccoli and cabbage, things that uh, don't do so well in the heat. So, you wanna start those around that time. Then for your warm weather crops like your uh, tomatoes, peas, green beans, you can start those around March 15th so that they'll be ready to set out after last frost, which in our area is in general around Mother's Day. You can also do another cold weather crop in the fall. So you would put those seeds in in the ground probably midsummer for a nice late fall or early winter harvest. Now, how do you do it? All right, well, you can start um, with this is your standard sort of seed starting tray. You're going to put a um, seed germinating mix in and then add your water after that. And then once you're done with that, you're ready to put your seeds in. In general, with a seed, it should tell you on the back of the pack how deep you should plant a seed, but the general rule of thumb is twice the diameter of the seed is about how deep you'll need to plant it. So you just set that in there, cover it up, then you want to cover it with a plastic lid, you can use plastic wrap too. I've seen people do that if you're not using a true seed starting um, greenhouse type thing. Once you see the first seedling start to emerge, you prop it open. And once all the seeds have come up, you're gonna wanna completely remove that. And then pay attention to the moisture level and let them grow. So Krista, uh, to transplant, you use the next size up, right? Right, you're gonna wanna move them into something a little bit larger. Once your plant gets to a point where it's got uh, 
about two sets of these true leaves. This is a seed leaf and it's not a true leaf. Once you have a, about the secondary set, they'll be ready to transfer. You're going to want to put a potting mix into the next container and then just put your plant in. This will provide a little more organic material and fertilizer for it. Now what's good for our area? You can grow um, most crops in our area. Most crops like tomatoes will do very well. Peas, green beans are always good, um, good winners. Lettuce is a no a no-brainer around here. You may want to do successive seeding so that you have a continuous crop throughout the season. You can put those in um, any time through the season. Every couple weeks you can put new seeds right into the ground. Things that would prefer a little bit more heat, usually peppers, things like okra, they might be a little harder to grow in our area just because it's a short growing season it's a little colder. So those are the types of things you might just want to buy already started at the store. Some of the things like I like lots of tomatoes and you had mentioned certain tomatoes it's better to buy they're mm -hmm. already ready right. to go. If you have a certain type of tomato, like I like to have a lot of the little um, um, salad tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes, so I'll start those from seed um, because I like to have a lot and then share some with my family, give some to my mom or whoever else might want to plant. Um, I'll start those from seeds, but if you want to try some new varieties or if you want just a few large tomatoes, um, it's nice to buy an heirloom or two just to have a different variety in your garden. But to start those from seed, if you're not going to use a whole lot of them, you know, probably better to go with the ones you like. Looking for plants you can trust to create a beautiful, easy to maintain garden? All you have to do is look for the Proven Winners name to know you're getting the most distinctive plants on the market. That's because Proven Winners partners with the top plant breeders around the world to ensure varieties that are vigorous, healthy, vibrant, and unique. Chestnut Hill Nursery Garden Center employees are Proven Winners certified. Go to ProvenWinners.com to learn more about what makes Proven Winners plants different from the rest. Proven Winners plants at Chestnut Hill Nursery, Route 209 Broadheadsville. First Northern Bank and Trust offers competitive rates for consumer lending. Looking for mortgage lending products? First Northern Bank and Trust offers fixed and variable rate mortgages for existing homes and construction loans with a construction permanent financing package for new homes. Bridge loans are available to qualified borrowers. You can also find out about jumbo loans, investment property loans, and second home financing. A home equity line of credit up to $150,000 has a variable interest rate, monthly statement of activity, and an initial supply of checks at no charge. A flex term home equity credit line allows you to pay interest only during the first five years of the loan. We also have unsecured personal loans, new and used auto loans, and more. Stop by any of our branch offices today to find out more. Hi everyone, welcome back. We are finished with this project, it's complete. Well Connie, we took a project here, we went into the woods in a very unmanageable site and we turned it into a wonderful setting. So let's go take a look. Jim, this is really interesting. Uh, it turned out well, didn't it? You know, we have a site here that's relatively pretty rugged. We're up here in the mountain in the woods, uh, log home. Uh, this family is a very large extended family and they gather here quite often. So they've got the whole house completed the way they want it. The basement's all finished off. Unfortunately, they were able to come out of their back door onto the deck here and came out to this really rugged open space. So what we tried to do is bring them into the woods, bring them into the space, but do it in such a way that it created a lot of interest and drew them out into the landscape a little bit more. And we tried to work with a lot of the natural flora and fauna and the materials that were here on site. I think we accomplished that pretty well. So let's, let's go over here and I'll show you where it all starts off. All right. Well, Connie, this is where it all begins. So below here, we have the finished basement, and they have a big rec room in there and stuff. You come out this beautiful deck, but then there was no place to go from there. So what we did here was we have a step down, and we created this landing. And from this landing, you kind of take in the view. As you can see, there's quite a bit of slope that goes down. They own quite a bit of the property. And as the seasons change, the views change down here as well. But there's a lot of native flora and fauna that's been existing here. We tried to keep some of that intact during the course of this project. But ultimately, the homeowners wanted to create a space for the family to get outside and enjoy another space. And it really kind of evolved around a fire pit. So I said, okay, we can do something with that. So what we've done now, we, could, we have this landing and we made a little bit of a path going down to the lower area where we created a new patio with a fire pit, with a sitting wall, which is kind of like a gathering place. So let's go take a look at that. I really like these flat stones, but what do you call them? 
<laughs> well, this is, a, this is a concrete stepping stone that actually looks like a piece of slate or a piece of natural stone, but they are concrete, which makes it nice and uh, very reliable. What you're standing on, though, this is really kind of unique. These are flagstone steps. So if you think about flagstone that you would see in a patio or something, normally they're maybe an inch, inch and a half, sometimes two inches thick. They've literally cut this out of the, of the quarry to make steps or treads that are the full six or seven inch depth, whatever we require, and they cut them to size. The beauty of this is that, again, it's a natural stone in this beautiful, gorgeous, natural setting, so it really fits very well into place here. So we have several of these steps coming down the path, down to the patio here. And of course, this is where all the entertaining becomes uh, effective and people come out. He's got a couple of chairs he's putting out here in this area. But then again, we built in this uh, beautiful fireplace, it or fire pretty. pit, I should say, not really a <laughs> fireplace. And, um, you know, this is what they wanted to do right from the beginning. As a matter of fact, as soon as we finished the project, they had a little filming gathering here. The first night they lit this up, he sent me a text and said, what a wonderful time they're having. Aww. So it's great. I mean, this is what it really was all about. Try to take this space and create an area where they can spend more time, not just inside the house, but outside as well. Even though the place was as rugged as it is, it still has a very natural feel. And we've tamed it a bit because now you can safely come down to this area. As you can see, we used a lot of the stone. All, matter of fact, most of the stone that you see all around us was all here on site. And we kind of used it as a, as a rough native um, mulch material, mm -hmm. almost like you would see a boulder field, which is kind of common in our area. Right. Um, so as the rain washes it off, it's just getting better and better looking all the time. We augmented some plants in the, in the area as well, just to kind of spruce it up and give it a little bit of a finished touch. Uh, we have some barberries and some boxwood, things that again, that the deer are not going to eat. We put in a nice October glory maple over there, which turns a beautiful orange okay. red color in the fall. So we try to incorporate some of these elements into the design and give it some year-round appeal. Jim, since they're not here much, how do they keep the plants watered? Well, it's a great question, Connie, and we thought about it early on in the project and the homeowner was a bit concerned about it too. So what we've done in the course of our work is install soaker hose. We've talked about this before. It's a hose that just kind of weeps the water out. So we've got that around all the plants in here and it goes back to the house and we've got it hooked up to timers and the timers are set for various times to go on during the day, during the week. And that takes care of the plants and it works out like a charm. You know, this is really a unique project. <laughs> well, it is. It's a little different. And even though we've incorporated a lot of the same materials we've used on other projects, the setting here is so entirely different. So it gave us the ability to try to do something really different with the project to try to incorporate some of the natural materials and make it feel like it belongs in this space. So again, if you have a project at home, we can certainly sit down with you and design a project that fits your lifestyle and your landscape. Just give us a call, 992-5131 or on the web at chnursery.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here. Yeah, so you're opening. Oop. I'm trying to be ready. <laughs> well, what we've been done for what we've oh, it isn't. okay. Let's do that again. I'm sorry. Well, I forgot. <laughs> we're going what to the rocks, I think. Next. <laughs> Jim, it seems to me that this landscape is not going to require much uh, <laughs> <laughs> maintenance <laughs> as I get hit almost. She just on got it. bombarded with acorn. <laughs> I know too hey, much you vacation. You want to step in? <laughs> uh, we're gonna get this project in the way next. You want to do it one more time? One more.